Pastor Shelley was Pastor Anderson's pick to step in and uh, and to take over, and nobody really got a, a choice or a say in that matter. It was kind of just forced upon everybody. And uh, Pastor Anderson's a very charismatic guy, and whatever he says, a lot of people are going to go along with. He want if he wants to ch paint his church pink and purple, probably everybody would be on board with it. So, you know, it's it's just whatever it goes. So. Something happened from the time we found out about Pastor Romero's sins and, and that Thursday, and then Friday happens. We, 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 we see a video from Pastor Shelley, and he's basically auditioning. He, he's, he's, he's campaigning to be our pastor because at the end of the day, you know, the, the steadfast congregations, uh, Fort Worth, Oklahoma, Jacksonville, we didn't have to be under him if we didn't want him. And he, he sent out a video on YouTube and he kind of, you know, laid out where he stood and uh, I liked what he had to say. Um, he, he, he made like a, a 12, 15 minute long video, I'm not sure. Uh, actually it was 20 minutes. But I, I went back and, and I, ha I had to watch it again because I wanted to get this straight. But I knew that he had made two videos that day totally contradicting each other. The first video he says this. He says, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read it. I had to slow it down and type it out verbatim. He says, around the 17-minute mark, and the, 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 the video is called Pastor Shelley, Steadfast Baptist Church Help, published on January 4th, 2019 by Sanderson 1611. Around the 17-minute mark, he says, Pastor Shelley, and I quote, My goal of any church would not be to upset the status quo. To, to change things that are working to uh, make, you know, make it become pure words Baptist Church. It's steadfast Baptist Church, and I would want to keep the integrity as much as possible. But to be honest and frank, there's definitely some issues with the church that would need to be resolved. And I would not be afraid to make changes where they need to be made. Where, uh, and what I'm talking about is something serious. I'm not talking about a doubtful disputation. I'm not talking about carnal things. I'm talking about serious problems with the church that need to be addressed that everybody would agree. You know, every single person would easily agree that, hey, this needs to change for the better. I've, you know, I only want to make change when it makes 100% sense where it's, you know, an agreement that everybody wants to, you know, fix and rectify things that may have been negligent or broken just because in this type of situation, there's going to be issues. There's going to be issues with any church and every church needs a strong leader to come in and provide guidance. And that's what I'm offering. Okay. He mentioned three times, everyone in agreement. Everybody, everyone, 100% makes sense. That was his first video. The, another one, the next one came out like an hour later. And he's got a problem with Brother Fanny. And this video is called Jonathan Shelley, Steadfast Jacksonville and Adam Fannin. Published on, July 4th, on J January 4th, 2019 by Sanderson 1611. At the six minute mark, he says, if I take on Steadfast Baptist Church and become their pastor, he is, regarding Brother Fannin, he is no longer going to be preaching or be in charge of Steadfast Jacksonville. I, uh, you know, I can't go on much because I haven't met the guy, but he has shown his true colors. <laughs> okay, S skip to the 11 minute mark, same video. And let me make it clear, today is the day of salvation. This is the day of salvation. I am providing, I am providing myself of a wonderful gift and bestowment unto this church. You want me to be your pastor? You want me to help you? And look, I'm not going to gain from Steadfast Jacksonville long term. It's implying he will gain in the short term. I'm not going to gain from Steadfast Jacksonville long term. 
it's going to be its own independent Baptist church. But I want to be the pastor of it right now and help them and guide them and direct them and give them the leadership that they need when they have been spiritually lacking. We might have been lacking in a pastor that never came around, but what we lacked in a pastor, Brother Phantom Morton made up for it. Right. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. More than made up for it. You know, so you're in Matthew 18. This is the only place I'm going to have you turn. Matthew 18. The Bible is very clear how we're supposed to deal with church discipline, how we're supposed to take care of our dirty laundry and how and when or if it should ever be aired out. And the Bible says first you go to them in private if you have a problem with somebody. And then you bring two or three witnesses. And then you tell it to the church, the whole congregation. Matthew 18, verse 15 says, Moreover thy brother, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. That's the least. There's no collateral damage whatsoever right there. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. When you have a problem with somebody in the church, you don't go to YouTube first. Amen. That's just retarded. Yes, sir. You don't go to YouTube. You know, I shouldn't, as a church member, be finding out that something, somebody's got a problem with somebody else in the church. I shouldn't be finding out the same guy the man in Singapore is finding out. Right. That's right. wrong. Amen. Okay? Especially if you're not even a part of the congregation yet. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You know, you're an outsider trying to get a job. You're trying to get hired on, trying to be, you know, ordained and put over us, and then you want to come and start calling shots and making waves. That doesn't sit well with me. No. You don't go to YouTube. So... I, I was already put off way. I mean, as soon as I saw that second video, I said, this guy went from hero to zero. I mean, just over in a matter of minutes. Yeah, and as far as I'm concerned. So we had a meeting that night. Y'all remember that? <laughs> Started at 7 p.m., went past 12 o'clock, five plus hours. It was a long time. But, you know, the, the, that's why it, the, the reason why it took so long is because we care about this church. We care about this church. We did not want to see the church split. We did not want to see anything happen to it. We wanted to all stay together. And the last thing we wanted was Brother Fannin getting cast out. But just that day alone, I saw Pastor Anderson's wife making Facebook comments saying the people in Jacksonville need to throw out Adam Fannin on his head. Who is this woman? She doesn't know him. Right. You know, so she's just, she's just adding to the fire. That's Pastor Anderson's wife of all people. Now, Brother Fanchon mentioned on the last night, the last night that we were all together before the split took place, he said, one, he said, one sinner destroyeth much good. That's the understatement of the century, in my opinion. The understatement of the century. So we all met that night, and everybody wanted to keep Brother Fannin as our preacher. Even the ones that were like down with four flat tires was Jonathan Shelley being our new pastor. Ah, forget what he said. He doesn't know what he's talking about. We still, we want Brother Fannin to be our preacher. And we're just like, no, you don't understand. If this guy becomes our new pastor, he's going to throw out Brother Fannin after all that he's done for us. He, he dropped what he was doing out in Fort Worth. When, when Pastor Romero called him into his office, two years ago and said, hey, what do you think about moving to Jacksonville, Florida and being a preacher to a congregation that you've never met before and, uh, you know, just, just cutting ties with everybody over here? He says, I'll do it. I'll go. And then he went home and told his wife. <laughs> so, you know, poor Sister Chantel. She gets the news. Oh, my whole world's getting flipped upside down. You know, he's done so much for us. He's come. He's been a, a great mentor and advisor and just a great, good friend. And, uh, you know, we, the last thing I'm going to do is backstab a friend. Can't do it. And that's, I'm looking at all the men in this room and, the, and we just, that's not who we are. Amen. It's not who we are. And so, you know, but still, they said, hey, we can work this out. Let's just get 
let's just get Pastor Shelley on the phone. There's just been a misunderstanding. You know, a lot's going on this week. Yeah, you're right. A lot's going on this week. Let's get him on the phone and we can resolve this. So the men of the church got him on speakerphone. We put it on the podium. Everybody was there. And he's talking on the other end of the line. And he wasn't hearing it. And finally, you know what he did? Click. Hung up on the men of the congregation. That just tells me all I need to know. He doesn't care about us. No. Doesn't have anything to do with us. So, whew. So that day, he threw Brother Fannin under the bus. He never went to him privately and said, hey, I got a problem. You know, I, you know the next step to do, hey, let's just get Pastor uh, uh, Anderson. Let's get Pastor Jimenez. We're going to do a Google Hangout. The four of us are going to sit down. We're going to talk about some things. And this is going to stay between the three or four of us. No, we found out with the guy in Singapore and everybody else in the world that there's, there's a problem. That's not how you handle church discipline. So Matthew 18 is a chapter that the new IFB does not really care to follow at all. But that's where we're going to be at today. Um, so our last service, well, uh, let me get back up. That night, after our five-hour meeting, finally Brother Dale said, that's it. Who remembers this? That's it. If you're supporting Brother Fannin, get behind him right now. Everybody, let's find out where you're at. And everybody cleared the, the, the seats and got up, and there was 80 to 90% behind Brother Fannin. And there was just a few outliers just kind of standing there, just kind of hanging out. Well, you know what? I went home that night, and I thought to myself, something's going to happen between now, Friday night, and Sunday morning. There's going to be people that's going to get shook up, get confused, they're going to get talked into something. And little did I know, that next day there was a secret park meeting. Did anybody in this room get a phone call to go to that meeting? No. no. Not one of you? No. Me either. <laughs> Me either. So there was a meeting that none of us were invited to. And some of the guys who supported Brother Fannin, they ended up getting a phone call and invited to this park. I don't know what they were told. Maybe they were told everybody was going to be there. But most of us were not. None of us got a phone call. And so in that meeting, they decided they're all going to go with Pastor Shelley and they're going to, you know, pretty much turn their back on Brother Fannin. They don't want nothing to do with us. And, you know, that really hurt. Yeah. That, that got us, didn't it? Yeah. That, was, that was something I still think about pretty often. And you know what? We love those guys. We right. still love those Amen. guys. Amen. Right. And, you know, we pray for them every week. They're on our church prayer list, right. you know, and we don't have, we don't harbor anything towards you, but that hurt, guys, really did. So, you know, anyways, our last service in the old building was um, that Sunday, and it was before Pastor Shelley was ordained over all of our congregations. We had our last, uh, our last meetup, and we went out soul winning. We had some good preaching. We had a baptism that night. Good times. And then we quietly quietly left the building, haven't ever gone back.